Hello, my name is Sarah Briggs. Today, Campton Carter and Allison Lack are interviewing Rowana Prell, who is the president of the Ventura Sunrise Optimist Club, as well as Donna Nicholson, who is the chairperson of the Most Optimistic Community Member. Hello, I'm Campton Carter with ECTV. Today, I will be interviewing Rowana Prell, president of the Ventura Sunrise Optimist Club. Hi, thank you so much for coming in today. Would you mind introducing yourself and telling a little bit about what you do? Uh, yes, thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Rowanna Prell, and I'm the current president of the Sunrise Optimist Club. Um, as you said, uh, I'm a retired educator, and um, I do other things. You know, I love volunteering, and um, I have a goal of making the world a better place, so I, in my retirement, I work on different projects um, to that end. So can you tell me what the Sunrise Ventura Club is? Yes, we are uh, a service club and here in, in the city of Ventura, and we raise money to um, help kids. I mean, that's the, that's the short answer. <laughs> So can you tell me a little bit about the Optimist Club's uh, history? Yes, so um, they started in 1962, and um, at that time they used to meet um, in the morning for breakfast, and it was actually at the beginning, it was a group of just men. Um, they, many service clubs did not um, allow women to join. And uh, I don't know exactly what year it was, but they changed um, and started um, admitting women. And um, we have, um, a, I don't know exactly the number, but I think we have more women in the club than men. <laughs> and, um, but um, the club is, um, has done different things in the past, um, but all to the end of helping uh, young people, helping students. I love hearing stories like that where women really can break into roles that men originally had. Um, so you'd mentioned that the Optimist Club is a service club. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me what a service club is? Yes, a service club is a group of usually adults, even though there are junior uh, service clubs um, on school campuses. And um, so Optimist Club, um, part of Optimist International, there's Lions Club, Lions International, Rotary, Kiwanis, Soroptimist uh, is a women's organization. And all of these groups of people um, have different activities and you know, different times that they meet and a different focus. Um, but their basic goal for all of them is to raise money and have activities that make their communities better places. So when the club was created, why do you think that it was based around optimism? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think at some point, 100 years ago, um, someone in the club found the Optimist Creed and they just, they liked that as um, a model for how to live. And it became part of the club. And so every um, Optimist Club uses the Optimist Creed. And um, when we have a gathering, we have, we have an event. Uh, there is, you know, usually we end our gathering uh, reciting the Optimist Creed. And I think that that's one of the things that makes our club different than other service clubs is that we have the Optimist Creed and that, that members um, join our club because they like the Optimist Creed and they like being with other people that um, want to live um, with this standard of, of behavior. And, um, and, and I think that makes that that makes us a little different. Um, it's one of the reasons that I joined the Sunrise Optimist Club instead of the Lions Club. I mean, Lions and Kiwanis and Rotary Clubs 
in Ventura do at, at worldwide do wonderful things in the community. Um, but the Optimist Creed and the Optimist Club spoke to me, and I think it does the same, um, you know, for our other members. So can you tell me what the Optimist Creed is? Yes, it <laughs> is. Uh, um, it, it's as a set of, um, of statements, okay. and um, I would be happy to read it if you would that. like. Um, so the, the Optimist Creed um, starts out, promise yourself. So it says, promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. To talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet. To make all your friends feel that there is something in them. To look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own. To forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. To wear a cheerful countenance at all times and give every creature you meet a smile. To give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. To be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. Now this is a pretty high standard. <laughs> and um, I would say that we can't live up to this every single day. But I like it as a goal. And, um, and I think other members like it, like it as a goal. And there's, there's a lot of research now, I mean, actual, you know, scientific research that supports um, an attitude of optimism. And it doesn't mean being Pollyanna. It doesn't mean um, not paying attention to reality. It doesn't mean, um, you know, being unrealistic. It means having hope and looking for what works and looking for what's good and, and not being um, ugly and negative. Um, you know, sometimes you have to address ugly and negative things but to function with kindness, to function with, um, with love and caring for other human beings and for the planet, I think is what optimism is all about. And it's, um, it, it has health benefits. It has um, people just live a happier life and yeah. a more satisfying life, I think, when they try to um, to live some of these things. Yeah, you gave me goosebumps when you read the creed. I feel like every time that I hear the creed being said out loud, I get super emotional because of how powerful it really is. So what role would you say that service clubs, like the Optim Optimist Club, what's the role in the community, would you say? Well, each type of service club, I think, takes a slightly different role. Um, and uh, I, I can't speak um, in detail about what other clubs do, but the, uh, the main focus is making the community better and improving the lives of the people in the community. And it takes a lot of different forms and looks, it just, you know, can be different even from year to year. So, but, but that's the main purpose, I think. Um, a lot of service clubs give scholarships to young people. Um, you know, our focus is um, youth. I mean, we, we have um, a, a statement uh, that we're a friend of youth. And, um, and bringing out the best in kids is another little motto that we have. So what projects does the club support at this time? 
Okay, well, we have um, the essay contest, and that's once a year. We have um, the essay contest. Um, the prompt is um, comes from Optimist International, and um, it's structured, you know, by giving out the prompt to high schools uh, in the area, and students respond to that, and then they're evaluated. Uh, the essays uh, all, of course, um, have something to do with optimism, and uh, we have community members who are judges. Uh, for for the essay contest, uh, we also have um, a student of the month. Yeah. So once a month, we honor a fifth grade student, and that student um, we rotate through all the different elementary schools in uh, Ventura, and um, the the school district Ventura a representative from Ventura Unified um, works with the principal at the school for that month. And we make sure that it, it rotates through all of the schools so every school has an opportunity. And um, we used to meet in person with the student of the month, but um, because of COVID, we stopped doing that. So we have a Zoom meeting um, in the morning, and it is at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and um, we um, have a certificate for the student, and we have um, the principal of the school um, and uh, say something um, about the school, and, uh, and then the teacher is there talking about why that student was selected and a little bit about the student. And, um, and then the student um, usually has family members you know, present on the call. We had one a couple of months ago, and, um, the, and this is the beauty of Zoom. As much as I don't like Zoom, <laughs> Um, there are certain advantages, and we had um, the student had family members, and there was a family member in Italy, and they were tuned in to our awards, wow. um, all the way, all the way from Italy, and then a grandparent that was in um, Northern California, and someone else in another state. So it's it often is not just parents, but you know the whole family is there saying good things about the student and, and encouraging them and appreciating, you know, who they are and what, what they, how they're, they're living their life. And it's, um, so beside, we give them a medal, you know, and a, a certificate and uh, a gift certificate uh, to Barnes and Noble. And um, it's, um, it's just, it, it's all of our club members love that because we get to um, we get to see and hear from um, a young person and it gives us hope about our future you know the future of our country the future of our city the future um, you know of our community and our world so that's something that we really love um, we also in in the fall we give an award um, for the an educator of the year and um, a safety officer of the year. So one year, uh, someone from Ventura Police Department, and then the next year from uh, Ventura Fire Department. And um, and we you know we have um, an event. We you know it has been different things this this last and we usually do it in October. And um, so we have we actually had an in-person event to have them uh, come and um, receive an award, and we have a meal, and um, and then there's a, a, some money that goes with it for them to use that money for some youth-related um, activity that they would want to do, and uh, that they would want to support, and so it's just showing them that. Um, we appreciate what they do, and um, and and I think that's um, sometimes um, being an educator, being a firefighter, being a police officer um, is not is not they're not easy jobs, and um, often you know they're they f people feel a lot of criticism, so when a community organization says we're behind you, we appreciate what you do. And, um, and we did add something to the student of the month um, when COVID hit and 
teachers, we have a lot of, uh, probably about 60% of our members um, are retired educators, or, or actually are active, are either active or uh, retired educators. So have that, and, and then we have some engineers, we have um, an attorney, we have you know different people in different um, jobs, but um, but we have a lot of educators. So our when COVID hit and teachers were having just a a tremendous job to try to figure out how to educate students when they couldn't be in the room with them. Um, we added um, a little um, appreciation for the teacher of the student of the month, and um, and that's something that we really love doing. As I mean, it's a very small thing that we do, but we remind them that um, it's it's they represent. Um, you know, all educators, and, and we can't, well, one year we did um, send out a letter and do something to say uh, for, you know, all, all educators in, in our community. Um, so that's something that we reach out, um, trying, trying to do. Um, did I say something about the We Believe in You scholarships? Not yet. Would you mind telling me a bit about the We Believe in You scholarship? Yes, so that's... That's a new that's a new thing. So, COVID, as horrible as as it is, as as it was certainly in in 2020, um, provided some opportunities for our club to make some really wonderful changes. Um, and our scholarship um, for graduating seniors uh, was different before COVID. And we started thinking about the world and the needs of people. Um, and certainly needs of young people a little bit differently. And so we restructured our scholarship program to something that now we call the We Believe in You Scholarship. And what that is, um, we ask, so instead of students applying for that scholarship, which is the way we had it before, they had to write an essay and they had to apply, we wanted to target uh, students who needed support, but and had financial need, but wouldn't necessarily apply for a scholarship. You know, that they just didn't, it didn't ever, maybe they didn't have anyone saying, well, go apply for scholarships, or they didn't think they were worthy of scholarships. And um, so we restructured this, and so what we do is we send out um, a letter to the principals of the six high schools in, in Ventura. So including um, adult ed, so er, there are six, six high schools that have graduating seniors. And uh, we send out a letter and say, we have um, a $500 scholarship. We would like you and your staff to choose a student at your school who is going on to some other um, post high school endeavor to educate themselves. It could be trade school, it could be four-year university, it could be Ventura College or another community college. Um, it, it could be trade school, it could be, you know, any number of, any number of things. And, um, and so then we um, uh, let get, we're next month, we're collecting those names right now. And next month, we will have um, an awards um, event and bring those students together and um, tell them how much we believe in them and um, present them with a check and say, um, you know, this we are here as um, because we believe in you. And we, we uh, support your endeavors to um, make your life a better place make your life better, and thereby making our community better. That's really inspiring. It's, it's been a wonderful thing, yeah. um, a really wonderful change that, that we made. How um, does one go about participating in the essay contest, the Optimist oh, essay contest? Oh, in the contest? essay contest. Yes. Um, well, the, the essay contest in, in the fall is listed on our website. Our club has a website, the Sunrise um, uh, 
always get the VenturousSunriseOptimist.org. And um, so they can, any student can find the information on there in, in the fall. There's, you know, a beginning date and an ending date, and we've, we've finished it now for, for this year. But next fall, that information will be out on the website. But each high school gets information about, um, about the essay contest, and we have uh, contacts at each high school, and they... Um, uh, then do, uh, and I'm not exactly sure how they do it at each high school. I think it's probably a little bit different. Um, but, but the contact that gets the information from us with, you know, the form and the prompt, they then uh, promote that and make that information available. And I think usually, um, like schools, schools that have, um, you know, a li they have a library or they have um, a center. A career center, um, they that's probably where some of the information is, but it's it's not hard to find it, and you certainly can find it on our website. For the past um, three four years or so, I've been participating in the Optimist Essay contests, and I've absolutely loved like the thinking that has to go into these essays, the optimism, the positivity, and seeing the silver lining in your struggles. It's it's very, very inspiring to me that you administer that to students. Well, it and and that's exactly I think why we do the essay contest is because we want people to think about, you know, what is the silver lining in in things in in your life in in the things you know everybody has hard things that happen to them and i and i've referred several times to COVID, and you know each family has had a great deal of pain wrapped around uh COVID, but it has provided a way for our club to restructure and to we actually increased our membership <laughs> instead of you know our club folding um and that's been a silver lining in in that horrible um, pandemic, just so yeah, and that's that's the best thing about the essay contest. I think is it allows it it allows people to think about um, different aspects of their life and how how that gets um, how you can see that in in a different light. So as we're coming to an end here, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I would like to tell you about a new program that we have. Okay. Um, and actually, I'm hoping that um, uh, Donna Nicholson, who's the chairperson of our Most Optimistic Community Member um, Award, will have a chance to talk. And um, But that's something new. Uh, we started it. Last year, we gave our first award, and, um, and we're seeking nominations again. And Donna has all the information. So will you be able to um, have her talk about that? Yes, we will have her. OK. Thank um, you so much for coming in today. You're it was welcome. really nice meeting you. You're welcome. It's been, it's been nice meeting you. Thank you. I'm Campton Carter with ECTV. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Campton, and thank you, Rowana, for coming in today. Next, we have Allison Lack interviewing Donna Nicholson. Hello, I'm Allison Lack, and I'm with ECTV. Today, I will be interviewing Donna Nicholson, chairperson of the Most Optimistic Community Member Award. Hi, how are you? I'm great, Allison. Thank you. Yeah, so glad you could be here today. We're lucky to have you. Thank you. I'd like to ask you first a little bit about how you got involved with the Ventura Sunrise Optimist Club. How did that happen? Well, um, I met Rowanna Prell, who was a member and is now the president of the club. And we became good friends and kind of through osmosis, I would say, <laughs> I um, learned about the club and her enthusiasm for it. And then she finally twisted my arm and I became a member last September. Oh, that's really wonderful. 
Can you tell me a little bit about the Most Optimistic Community Member Award? Yes, um, this is now the second annual award. Um, nominations were opened in early March and they close in on June 1st. And it's an outreach for people in the community. Um, it's open to um, adults and minors. Um, there's a nomination form on the Sunrise Optimist um, website and it's just about who do you feel moved touched and inspired by that you would be willing to nominate them for an award and then after the nominations close in June we will be um, reviewing those nomination forms and then a committee will select the winner which will be announced later in the summer and the awards given in October that's wonderful with so many other projects, what inspired the club to start this award in particular? Um, I don't have the exact answer for that. <laughs> um, but Rowanna, again, the president, she um, saw a need. And then apparently the board thought it was a really great idea. And now we are moving ahead. This year, it turned out that we had a lot of groundwork to do. We had to, to write up the... Um, the press release and create the nomination form that we that was not available last year. So it was a lot of um, reinventing things, and that made it a challenge. And knowing that we're doing good work for the future. That's wonderful. And how many nominees do you expect to receive? Again, a very good question. I don't have an answer <laughs> for. <laughs> um, I would really be delighted if we had a dozen. Um, more would be nice too. Um, currently, we have not received any, so we have a goal to reach. Yeah, hopefully this interview will help spread the word. I hope so, yes, thank you. <laughs> Definitely. And what traits should these nominees embody in your opinion? They should be, well, optimistic, right? <laughs> um, but they should have a delight in life, I think. Someone who, even if they don't wake up happy every day, sometime in the day they find a happiness that they didn't know was available with an event or something that else happened to them during the day. Something that makes them feel alive and happy and they're able to spread that to other people. They may have a rain cloud over their head, but they're still able to smile and be sunshiny. That's wonderful. And if you were able, or are you able to nominate someone for this award? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in our rules, but if I don't you, see why not. Yeah, if you could, who would you nominate? Who would I nominate? Um, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of people that... Um, and I don't know of a lot of people in Ventura because I've only I've only lived here a short time. Um, I would say, again, someone who may not be as widely known. So someone who's a more of a background person, but gives optimism and moves things forward. Um, I can think of several um, people in the healing profession that I might nominate. That definitely sounds wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this award? Um, no, but I'd love to get some nominations coming <laughs> through. Yes. Definitely. Hopefully with this interview, we can spread the word. Perfect. Thank you, Allison. Yes. Thank you very much for being here. It was lovely talking with you. Thank you, Allison. I'm Allison Lack with ECTV. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Allison, and thank you, Donna, for coming in today. It was a pleasure to have both Rowana and Donna in the studio today. For more information on Optimus International, you can go to www.optimus.org. This is ECTV. Thank you for watching.